Laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, clearly correcting and improving the two most important shooting fundamentals, aiming and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, hear from the couple reviving the oldest resort gun club in the U.S. Plus guns, optics, cool ways to protect your gun, and more. Call in now with your range reports. One Tom Talk Gun. Now, here's Tom. It's a great week to be alive. I guarantee it's been so much fun. Hey, 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 welcome. I'm Tom Gresham. I'm glad that you are here. It's called Tom Gresham's gun talk because well that's me tom gresham and we talk about guns and ammo and scopes and optics and pretty much anything that has to do with firearms including owning them shooting them collecting them storing them safely responsibly because we're the good guys we're the good gals you know you know the ones you don't hear about (laughs) the ones that the media ignores because why would they talk about people who are doing things right i mean come on to be fair you don't go to Someplace you don't drive to work and just just say, oh, wow, man, all four tires stayed up. No, but if a tire goes flat, that's what you're going to be talking about. So the anomaly is what I'm saying. The anomaly is what people talk about, and the anomaly is what the media focuses on. So they, when they're talking about people who misuse guns, that is, in fact, the anomaly by definition by the way they work. Why else would they talk about something that was every day? But everyday people do extraordinary things. Case in point. Let's see, where was this? Uh, Lee County, I believe down in Florida. Yep, yep, yep. Lee County Sheriff's Deputy Dean Bards and members of the Highway Patrol were uh, attending to an accident on Interstate 75 when a, a motorist almost struck Bards. It's B-A-R-D-E-S. I hope I'm getting that correct, the pronunciation right. Almost hit this guy, the, the Sheriff's Deputy. Well, they caused a a chase ensued, as you might imagine. At the end of the chase, the guy who was in the car, who almost ran into the officer, jumps out of his car, runs at Bards, knocks him down, gets on top of him, and just starts beating him, trying to beat him to death. And the officer is yelling and calling for help, and this guy's just on top of him, throwing punches, uh, punches and hitting and hitting, and it's like well, one uh, witness said, he threw the officer to the ground so violently. I mean, it was just awful. A- and he just started punching him and hitting and hitting and hitting. I thought he was going to kill him. Well, as the deputy called out for help, oh, an armed Florida concealed weapon license holder happened upon the scene. This guy with a carry permit, drew his gun, rushed from his vehicle to the deputy's defense, didn't just light off around. He ordered the motorist to cease his assault on the deputy. Many times he yelled at him. And when the motorist continued to beat that deputy, the guy with the carry permit shot him and killed him. Following the incident, the Lee County Sheriff, Mike Scott, issued a statement commending the actions of the carry permit holder. The sheriff said, quote, My deepest and sincere appreciation goes to the citizen who engaged the crazed assailant and stopped the imminent threat of great bodily harm or death to our deputy. Happens a lot, not necessarily to police officers helping them out, although good guys and good gals with guns do help the cops whenever they can. But it happens every day, good people using guns to protect themselves, rarely makes the news. It's not the story they want. It's not the narrative that they're looking for. So what I just have to say, you guys are great. I've been getting more and more emails and Twitter suggestions from people saying, here's what Trump should do. Here's what I wish would be happening. And we will talk a lot about that, of course, as we go through the rest of the day here on Gun Talk. We're also going to be talking about a a new gun club 
resurrecting one actually from from way beyond, from way back. Very cool concept. And some new stuff out there, some new gear that we want to talk about. We'll be actually taking your calls, comments, questions, and range reports. And right now would be a really good time for you to do that. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. 866-825-5486. Or actually, if you prefer, just dial one Tom Talk Gun, and that should work. That should get you in here also. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. Be right back with more gun talk. Black Friday, a sadistic ritual that entails ridiculous lines, jammed shopping malls, and dust-ups over cheap TVs. Why put yourself through that? Skip it and check out Brownell's Black Rifle event, running all November long. That's right, not just a day, but a full month of amazing deals on everything AR. Guns, parts, accessories, optics, anything you can imagine. Go to brownells.com today. After all, black rifles are way cooler than black eyes. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Delio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Delio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Delio. Made in America. Gluten-free at the App Store and Google Play or GunDealio.com. Laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, improving the skill level of the shooter by enhancing proper fundamentals like sight alignment and trigger control and providing life-saving practices that can be depended on in moments of crisis. Call 800-442-2406 or visit CrimsonTrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. Sid is on the way. Silencer Shop has shipped a Sid kiosk to a gun store near you. What is Sid? It's secure identity documentation where you and all of your trustees can register, get fingerprinted, and complete the documents necessary to own a silencer in your gun trust. Easy, ATF compliance, and you only need to visit Sid once. Get to know Sid, your new 41F champion. Learn more at silencershop.com. Making the world a quieter place. The Ruger American Rifle is a 100% American-made firearm that offers outstanding performance at a great price. Available in standard size and compact models, it features power bedding integral bedding blocks, a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, a flush fit four-round rotary magazine, and a three-lug bolt with 70-degree throw. Compact models feature a shorter length of pull and a shorter barrel for a reduction in overall length of more than five inches. The Ruger American Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. We're back. Tom Gresham here. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in. Uh, let's see. Giving away stuff. Ruger's new gun giveaway. Giving away, wow, a gun a week. This is nuts. Uh, but we're doing it anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> this is our gun talk and Ruger giveaway a gun a week idea. Kind of nuts, though, but here we go. Uh, if you go to guntalk.com slash win, or you can uh, like us on the Gun Talk Facebook page. This thing's going to end on Friday, December the 2nd. Week one, it was a Mark IV pistol. Week two, a Ruger American Pistol Compact. Week three, the LCP-2. Week four, Hot Diggity Dog, an SR-1911. A really nice 1911 pistol. Also, we are heading into Black Friday sales. A lot of them are up already. A lot of things going on. Let's see. Special deal from Pyramid Air Gun Mall at Pyramid Air. That's with all Ys. P-Y-R-A-M-Y-D. PyramidAir.com. 10% off if you use the code GUNTALK. Well, that's pretty cool. We just got a couple of their guns. Man, adult air guns. It's all about having trigger time, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that in just a minute. It's all about pulling the trigger a lot, because the more you pull the trigger, the better you get at it. 
So 10% off if you use the code GUNTALK at PyramidAir.com. Also, Black Friday deals going on right now. Brownells, lots of uh, rifles on sale, new one every day, many more on Black Friday. Save up to 500 bucks on Liberty Safe Franklin 50. Uh, CompTAC holsters offering 15% off everything with the code THANKS16 at CompTAC.com. Let's see, Dury's Guns, a lot of things going on over Dury's, a lot of good deals. I've been looking at those. And Remington, actually, all of these are on the Gun Dealio app. You don't have to write any of this stuff down. Just check your Gun Dealio app. You'll find that uh, all of this stuff is there. A lot more going on, and we'll have more information about Black Friday as we go along. Okay, I mentioned trigger time. I had an idea, and it doesn't make sense. It's not December yet, but I'm going to go ahead and spring it on you now. We'll get an early start a couple of weeks early. I'm calling it Dry Fire December, which is just a way of saying, let's get a bunch of trigger time. If you've got an adult air gun, yes, absolutely do it. It is They're so good. Here's my thought for you. You want to shoot more. You want to shoot better. Dry firing works. And when I say dry firing, I'm including using adult air guns on this, something like you get from Pyramid Air or SIG has its uh, air guns. My suggestion is this, 100 times a day from now until the end of the year. Now, rules. There are rules here. And these are rules you don't get to fudge on. These are rules you don't get to break. These are rules that you cannot even flirt with. And the rule is this. When you are dry firing, you may not have, you are not allowed to have, you must not have any live ammunition in the room where you're doing this. So it's not a case of just unload it and put the ammo to the side. No, 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 no. you got to go to another room where there is no ammo. And here's the other thing. You're using a semi-automatic pistol. Think of this as being OCD. You rack the slide three times. Rack it, rack it, rack it. Here's a clue. If a live round comes out each time you rack it, it's not unloaded yet. You haven't removed the magazine. One of the reasons that we do this. Take the magazine out, rack, rack, rack. It's absolutely unloaded. Now you go to another room, check it again, rack, rack, rack. Now we can start our dry fire practice. What are we going to try to do? Well, we're working on trigger control primarily because that's why people miss. It's not that they aim badly. It's they don't control their trigger. So what we want is to Press the shot off without disturbing the sights. And let's do it slowly at first. Just get on a a safe backdrop. I like something like a bookshelf with lots of heavy books in it. A gun safe is not a bad thing to be pointing at, just just in case. Just in case you screw up. We don't want a bullet to go flinging across the neighborhood. And the idea here is to have the sights on the target, press the trigger, and then after the hammer falls or the striker falls, the sights are still on the target. And you hold that sight picture. This is very important. After you press off the shot, you hold the sight picture. Because if you go click and then you just drop the gun off, you're training yourself to come off the target as you press the trigger. And you will do that when you shoot the gun. But if you do this a hundred times a day, at night, whenever, on the target, press, click, hold. Now, Cock the gun, rack the slide, recock it however you need to do it. Do it again. On the target, press, click, hold. We got to do this without disturbing the sights. And then at a certain point, you can start working on your draw. You probably don't practice your draw much, if at all. Again, unloaded, unloaded, unloaded. And we're going to do the draw. We're going to work on it slow because we need to work on some details here. How you get the gun out. How you marry your hands together up by your chest, how you extend them. If you don't know these things, check out our DVDs. We have that information there. We're going to press off one shot. We're going to hold. And then we're going to slowly reholster over and over. And then as you get toward the end of the month, you can start speeding up. But mostly what we're working on is that trigger press. And if the at the end of the month you have three thousand trigger presses or so. You're simply going to be better. And you didn't spend any money. That's not a bad thing. 
Hey, Jeff has called in on three. He's out of Oregon. Hey, Jeff, you got a range report for us? I sure do, Tom. I just bought my fourth 204 Ruger at a local discount store here a little while ago, and mm-hmm. they more sighted it at the store, which they usually do. It's a Savage Trophy Hunter model, which I absolutely love. Took it out mm-hmm. to the range, and it was six, seven inches off at 100 yards. It walked right into the bullseye. The last three t- er, shots were touching each other, shooting the 32-grain Hornady factory loads. It's just a sweet shooting rifle that I just can't talk highly enough about that Savage Trophy Hunter package. Let me ask you a question. Um, you said this yeah. is your fourth fourth 204. Why? Uh-huh. Tell us what is it about the 204 you like so much? It's I like the trajectory. I like what it does to rock chucks. Um, and I can get ammo for it easily. Um, you know, and it, there's very little recoil. It's you were talking about practicing in the inside the house, which is you know, I recommend that too, but mm-hmm. shooting that 204, there's little enough recoil to where you can, if you keep shooting that, you know, you your uh, sight picture doesn't change after the shot. You're right there. Well, and let me, for those who don't know, when you're shooting varmints, if you can stay in the scope and see the bullet hit, particularly if you're doing long range and maybe your first shot's a miss and you go, oh, wow, I'm two inches to the left. You can then just correct on the follow-up shot, whereas if you shoot, for instance, even a twenty two two fifty, well, has enough recoil to take you off the shot, whereas the two hundred four Ruger, even though it's, it's blazingly fast, it's a, it's a crazy fast bullet, but it uses a lighter bullet, and it's a twenty caliber, not a twenty two caliber. And what, Jeff, you said uh, is that a thirty two grain bullet you're shooting? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, Man, that thing's going it, fast. The, the factory load is, it says on the box, 4225 at the muzzle. And mm-hmm. a friend of mine that's the captain of the county sheriff's department also has one, and he shot it and used his chronograph, and it was faster than the 4225 that is wow. printed on the box. So, you know, you're you're getting an honest speed evaluation on that. Yeah, now this is, and for those who don't know, this is a, a centerfire cartridge. This is not a rimfire cartridge. So it's it's closer to a two two three than it is to something like the 17 HMR. Oh, yeah, it sure is. And what a yeah. nice rifle to handle and shoot. It is. You know, and I don't think the 204 Ruger gets um, nearly enough attention What's, let me ask you, what I put you on the spot. What's your longest shot on a critter, on varmint, with this? So far, only about 260 yards on a rock chuck. That's but probably a, one, a case of where you are and, and where you're hunting. Yeah, it was along a, a river bank. A friend has a horse arena, and he was having trouble with the rock chucks digging under the arena. So he asked me to come down and... I was 14 for 14 that day, which is unreal shooting for me. <laughs> you, no wonder you like the 204. That is terrific. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. Very cool. All right, Jeff. Look, I appreciate it. That's a great range report. Let's get to uh, line one. Robert uh, out of California. Robert, you got a range report, and you don't have a lot of time, so give it to me, please. Okay. Uh, my range report is uh, MNP 9 Shield um, with the safety. Um, mm-hmm. seems like a pretty good gun. I'm just not used to the, uh, striker fire, um, platform. Um, my first, uh, gun was, a 1911 and I think I got spoiled on that. <laughs> it, you know, it is a change for those of us who've grown up on a 1911 with a big old thumb safety to go to a striker fire gun. Uh, is that why you went with the one with the safety because you're used to having an external safety? No, I went with the safety because unfortunately I'm out here in California and that's all I can oh. get. That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. you know, uh, you will get used to it. The shield is a really nice pistol. Uh, I just, I think it's a, a great gun. It's right in what I think of as the sweet spot for single stack nine millimeter carry guns. The uh, 
the XDS, the Shield, or, uh, SIG, there's like three or four of them right in there that are just sweet as they can be. Hey, Robert, I appreciate that call. I just happened, by the way, talk about deals. There are so many deals out there. I just was looking at, I can't remember if it was Brownells or Dury's or somebody. They were listing the Shield at 349 which I thought was a really good price for that. I think we're going to see some terrific deals in the next six weeks. I mean, it's time right now, Black Friday running through the end of the year. I don't know if gunmakers ramped up, and now they're thinking maybe there's not going to be quite the rush on guns. But if that's the case, there are going to be some really good deals. Now, I will tell you personally, I'm I'm still buying. I There are some really nice guns out there that I don't have. I... I think I mentioned I, I went ahead and went with the 686 uh, Smith. I wanted that seven shot 357. And then I made the mistake of going back to their website. And then I scroll down and they hit a little deal. Oh, another, there's another page down below there. Oh my gosh. They've got the same revolver in 44 Magnum. Well, duh. Yeah. So, yes, I, I am a self enabler. I am. So we have two of them coming in. I only have one holster ordered so far, and it won't work for both of them. So, well, you know what that means, don't you? There's another holster in the works somewhere. It's going to be. And with both of those, you can shoot the 38 Special, or in the 44 Magnum, you can shoot the 44 Special in there. And I think the 44 Special is such a sweetheart. And it's actually, it's a really good cartridge in and of itself, and there are a lot of good loads, everything from, you know, uh, Black Hills has the cowboy loads up to the super duper loads from uh, Double Tap Ammo, and Mike loads the 44 Special in some fairly stout hard cast lead bullets. It actually, might even be hard to argue to go to a 44 Magnum when you've got that option out there. So, just a lot of things going on, and I think they're going to be a lot of really good deals. So, there you go. We'll be talking a little bit about some of the cool new products that are coming out, some things that we'll be talking about as we look for 2017. Also, like to get your take on it. Would you accept the December Dry Fire Challenge? Would you get involved in that? 866-TALK-GUN Get you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. And we are back. One of the companies that we love working with because they make such good stuff and they're always fun to find out what are they up to is the folks at Trigicon. And Logan Killam joins us right now from Trigicon. But Logan, before we talk about stuff, I got to hear the story, man. What What is the deal with Apostle? Hey, hey, Tom. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. We sure appreciate you, you making bet. time and your schedule for us this afternoon. But uh, as many of you know, as many of your listeners will certainly understand, this last weekend was the opening of deer season across this great country of ours. And uh, like so many other Americans, I found myself in the deer woods uh, overlooking this just beautiful little river bottom here and, you know, the hardwoods growing all around me and this little stream running uh, down river mm-hmm. of me there, and I'm sitting there mm-hmm. right at last light, and I just I hear this rustling in the leaves. And if you've ever hunted in the woods this time of year, you know those leaves can make a lot of noise, right? And you never know oh, what yeah. it's going to be. Is it going to be a squirrel? Is it going to be that deer sneaking in on you? So I'm looking, right. and I'm looking, I'm looking, and here I see this this fuzzy gray object working its way up the hill towards me. And if you guys have ever seen possums in the woods, you know that they're they're strange creatures and they have unusual habits. And this one was no exception. So he's kind of working up this hill towards me and he keeps coming about 10 yards and lifting his head up in the air. And you can just see him wave his head back and forward, smelling. He smells something, but he can't mm-hmm. quite figure out what it is. And I bet you didn't know this because I didn't know this, but possums apparently do not see color. Because I am standing there in boys' orange sweatshirt. Could not be missed <laughs> with this possum. Could not see me. Could not make out okay. what I was. As long as you're not Here moving, he can't see you. I'm not moving. That's exactly it. You know it. As long right. as you don't move, critters yeah. in the woods cannot see you. So he keeps coming okay. closer and closer and rummaging through the leaves. And 
every 10 yards or so, he'd pick his head up and look at me and sniff and sniff and try to figure out what it was. He gets mm-hmm. closer and closer and closer. And he gets to about five yards. And right about two yards in front of me, there's this log. And he starts to cross this log. And he has one of those moments. And we've all had them where you're about to make a step, right? You get your foot up in the air. And mm-hmm. before you put it down, you change your mind. And that's what this poor <laughs> possum did. He was about two yards from me. He picks that paw up and freezes right in midair. And he has then realized, you know what? This isn't right. And it's at that moment I decided to go, boop. And that possum <laughs> leapt up in the air. And I tell you what, I expected that possum just to freeze, roll over, and fall dead. The growl right. that came out of that possum did not Ooh. belong on an animal that small. I could not believe the growl <laughs> that came out of that possum. <laughs> the dingest thing I have, I have seen in a long time. You know what that possum did? He ran about five yards, turned around, and looked back at me. And you must have, he must have been thinking, all right, now what? You know, I, he, mm-hmm. This thing in the woods had me dead to rights, scares the <laughs> heck out of me, and doesn't come after me. Right. That poor possum. <laughs> and off he goes. <laughs> off he, he wanders there back go. up into the trees and on with his merry old way. Uh, you had a close that's encounter a close, of the possum kind. <laughs> it did. You know, that's one of those great things that when you're out in the woods this time of year, you just never know what you're going to run into. That stuff you would never see sitting at home. But you're out there, you're quiet and in nature. It's, it's great. It's beautiful. You know, and it occurs to me as you're telling this story, for a lot of us, that's the hunt. That's the interesting part. Yeah. You came back and told that story to people, and it wasn't that, well, I shot this or I killed that. Nope. It was like, I had this fabulous experience in the woods, never pulled a trigger, but let me just tell you the story, because it wouldn't have happened if you hadn't been there. That's exactly right. That is so yeah. cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing. That is, uh, hey, that's it's, part it's of the whole pleasure. hunting experience. Yeah. All right, I got to ask you about something here. Absolutely. If I had a, if I had a, if I had a really big honking machine gun, I mean, we're talking about a big machine gun. Would you have something I could put on it? You know, it's a funny you bring that up. We we have just developed <laughs> something specifically for guys with your problem. You know, you've got this machine gun. It sits in your safe all day. Every time you pull it out, you can't hit anything because the iron sights can't be adjusted, and you end up wasting half your ammo. When instead mm-hmm. you want to shoot up your old 1967 Volkswagen Bug, but instead you end up putting half your rounds in the dirt. <laughs> yes, Trigicon has just developed our first ever purpose-built reflex machine gun sight. So think of our other <laughs> reflex sights, the RMR, the MRO, but now blow it up three times larger than it ought to be and design it specifically for machine gun applications, and you'd have the MGRS. Okay, I got to tell you, true story. I, I'm at the NASGW show, the Sporting Goods Wholesaler Show, yep. about six weeks ago. I walk into the booth, and we're shooting the breeze there, and I look over, and there's this demo, a model of a reflex sight. I said, well, that's cool. They've made up a, a big demo so we could actually look at a reflex sight. And I'm thinking, well, this would be cool. I reach over to pick it up, thinking this is a plastic mock-up, and that sucker must weigh like four pounds. I go, what is that? No, that's not a mock-up. That's the actual site. It's huge. Yep. For those of those listeners, viewers who haven't seen it, imagine a loaf of bread that was a machine gun reflex site, and that's may, to put may, it in perspective. Yeah, and it's and it's big. So, what do you put this on? This, this is like this is not for an AR type machine gun. This is for like a a crew serve thing. You got it. So, the United States Army, the big green machine, came to us about uh, eighteen months ago and said, "Hey." We've got this problem. The problem is that your average 18, 19 year old man who woman who joins their country has never fired a bell fed machine gun. They don't get a lot of practice with it. The ammunition is incredibly expensive. And the ranges that our men and women are finding themselves engaged in are extremely long 600, 700, mm-hmm. 800 meters. And with this machine gun sight, can you imagine shooting that with iron sights out that far? So they came to us, the Army, and asked, hey, can you guys design and help us build a site that can, we can field it, that can reduce our ammunition costs, help our soldiers hit their targets, you know, make sure that they get home mm-hmm. safely, and that's what we have done. So in conjunction with them around sort of a, a spec document that they wrote, 
we developed this MGRS specifically for the M2 or the Modus, the 50 caliber machine gun that's been fielded by the U.S. Armed Forces since just mm-hmm. before World War II. And then, of course, the M240 or the M249 or the commonly known as the SAW, the, the saw, sure. replacement for the M60, so belt-fed machine guns. So, so I mean, and there are people in the civilian world who own some of these. Can they buy this and put it on there? Yep, absolutely. It's available to the public. It's we're in initial production right now, and we are fielding our first units to our men and women who are going overseas and abroad right now. It will be available to the public in early spring, Marchish time frame. Um, and yes, I'm afraid to ask. Would be really how much? Yeah, please. So the How MSRP much? for the MGRS and the magnifier is going to be four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. That's a whole lot so less than I thought you were. I, th- I thought you were going to say fifteen grand. I really did. Well, wow. You know we've we've tried to make this affordable, and I say that because we're trying to get this into every unit that's going to be going overseas's hands. Most units have, before they get fielded, have the ability to buy a certain amount of gear. And we're trying mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. get our costs down on this unit to make it affordable for every unit that has one of these belt-fed machine guns before they deploy. Which also means that for our civilians at home who are interested in this sort of thing as well, it's going to be more affordable for you as well. That's pretty cool. Tell you what, uh, if you would, Logan, could you hold on just a second here? I'd like to take a quick break because I know you've got a product for the rest of us, regular folks, and it's pretty cool. I want to talk about that. So we'll get you uh, to fill in the blanks on the backside of this. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. Teresa, don't go anywhere. We're going to get to you just really quickly. And if you'd like to join us, if you're listening and you want to share a range report, by all means, give us a holler. 866-TALK-GUN. A decade since it was first introduced, the Taurus Judge still rules. This isn't just any personal defense revolver. This is an everyday gun. With its decisive stopping power, it's the original five-shot game changer. Today, it's available in more than a dozen models and capable of chambering both 45 Colt and 410 shot shell. You be the judge. Taurus Judge. What legends are made of. Visit TaurusUSA.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look. This really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. Nosler has been a leader in bullets and ammunition for decades and keeps growing with new product introductions that follow this tradition. Accurate, highly effective bullets and ammo for long-range shooting, precision rifle competition, and big game hunting. To be the first to hear about new product releases and promotions, follow Nosler on Facebook and Instagram and become part of the conversation. You won't settle, and neither will we. Nosler.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Want to customize the look of your firearm and give it ultimate durability? Well, don't paint it. Cerakote it. Cerakote is a spray-on ceramic polymer coating that uses state-of-the-art technology to achieve superior abrasion resistance and corrosion protection. Field-proven and trusted by manufacturers and gun owners like you, Cerakote is the industry's unmatched performance leader. 
In lab testing and real-world applications, Cerakote outperforms the competition every time. See for yourself and find a local certified applicator near you at Cerakote.com. Choose the best. Choose Cerakote and finish strong. talk to knowledgeable shooters they often will be talking to you about red dot sites reflex sites that type of thing and you start hanging around uh with experienced competitors you start to see a lot more of those on pistols we're talking with uh logan killam from trigicon and logan the rmr of course has been it's kind of been the standard by which everything else is judged in that category for a long time wouldn't you say it is. We weren't the first into the market, but we did come up early on with some innovation that has allowed the RMR to take a dominant share of the market, uh, primarily because it is so rugged and it was designed to survive drops and impacts and the sort of general wear and tear that your pistol goes through uh, day in, day mm-hmm. out at the range. Okay. R- RMR, uh, rugged, what's it? Rugged something? Miniature reflex. reflex. Miniature reflex. Okay. Miniature reflex. Okay. Okay. Miniature reflex. That- that's it. That's right. And the whole thing about it, it's really, it's rugged. I mean, you can beat it up, you can drop it, and the thing just keeps working. It is. It was originally designed around the military spec drop testing. And what that means mm-hmm. is you can take that RMR, put it on top of your standard fully loaded M4, which weighs about nine pounds, and drop it from two meters on the concrete, and the optic needs to survive. And it needs wow. to hold zero. So it was with that design specification in mind which caused us mm-hmm. to develop that distinctive scalloped shape, which gives it that ears, if you will, uh, to survive those uh, impacts. Okay, okay. So you're, basically you built points into it, and it hits the points, if you will, the, the ears, and that absorbs some of the recoil. It's basically a, a, an engineering force vector thingy that you got going there. You got it. The force of the impact is directed down the sides of the optic into the frame of the weapon and not into the glass, which is, of course, the fragile part, as you can imagine. All right, so what's what's the advantage? How do you explain the advantage of using the RMR on a handgun? I mean, on an AR, it's like the coolest thing ever. But on a handgun, what's it do for somebody? So if you go back to sort of your pistol 101 basics, the instructors will tell you when you present the pistol, you really need to be looking at your front sight. Background, your target needs to almost be blurry, and you need to be focusing on your front sight. That is a very, very difficult skill for many of us to master, your natural mm-hmm. inclination is to look at your target, particularly if it, gosh forbid, you happen to find yourself in a real-world situation where you need to defend yourself. Your mm-hmm. focus, your adrenaline is all going to be going on to what the target is. So a pistol with an RMR, when you present it, that dot, that reflex dot is projecting itself, if you were, onto the target. So what that means is you can keep your target in focus. You can keep your eyes downrange that dot will appear on your target and help you engage that target more accurately, more quickly, and more efficiently. And well, that's I'll really tell you, the, when the I see it, it, it's when you're, when you're teaching somebody to shoot, if they've got an RMR on the gun, rifle or pistol, or shotgun for that matter, you really don't have to do a lot of explaining. You look, put dot on target, pull trigger, you know, there it goes. So you've got the, uh, the RMR now uh, available and it's, it's just rocking and rolling, isn't it? It is. It's doing very well. We've been very pleased with it. Every year, more and more people put it on their pistols. Every year, more and more firearms companies come out with more pistols. They're ready, ready for optics. I think at this year's SHOT Show, you'll see at least two more major pistol manufacturers. They're going to be coming out with optics-ready pistols, uh, of which the RMR is perfect for there you go. And, of course, all the information is at the Trigicon website. It's, and, by the way, uh, Trigicon is T-R-I-J-I-C-O-N, Trigicon.com. Logan, thank you so much. Always great products. And got to love that uh, possum story. That is fabulous, man. Uh, Tom, it's our pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. You take care. Got to love it. Uh, if you ever mess with a possum, a lot of times they'll play dead. But sometimes they just get mad and hiss and growl and snarl at you. I'll never do that to you.
All right, back with you here. We had uh, a call a while ago. She couldn't hang with us, but Teresa called in from North Dakota. She wanted to thank the person who helped the officer down in Florida, but she wanted to know, she said, well, could they have shot this guy in the shoulder or something? Well, Teresa, I understand what you're saying, and maybe in a different set of circumstances, maybe that would have worked out. In this case, we have somebody who's on top of a police officer hitting him and hitting him and hitting him. And here's the thing to understand. And I think maybe this is the part that a lot of people don't get. You can, and people have, killed people with a single punch. And then when you get somebody down on the ground, then you take their head and start smashing into the ground, like Trayvon Martin was doing to George Zimmerman, trying to kill him. At that point, you got to make it stop right now. And shooting people around the edges, which is what it actually is, when you shoot them in the shoulder, hoping that that dissuades them, the reality is a lot of times it doesn't. So what you try to do is you try to make them stop quickly. You shoot them right in the middle, the most vital part. And yes, it might kill them. It might not. But it, it's it got the best chance of making them stop the assault, stop the attack, stop trying to kill someone. If, and here's the way I think about it, if they happen to die as a result of that, that's an occupational hazard for bad behavior on their part of trying to kill somebody. Wasn't what I was trying to accomplish, wasn't what he was trying to accomplish, but it's a, as they say, a logical con- consequence. So, no, you don't try to shoot him in the shoulder, you don't try to shoot him in the hand, you don't try to shoot him in the leg. You shoot them in the place that's most likely to make them stop doing what they're doing as fast as possible. And typically, if you get good training and you know what you're doing, you don't shoot them once. You shoot them several times because handgun bullets are, bullets are just not that effective. Bill is on line three, called in from Liberty Mo. Hey, Bill, what's on your mind? Well, Tom, while we've got the ball rolling, we really shouldn't even think about sitting on our hands or stopping. I I have made a commitment to myself that I'm going to try to get three people into the NRA. And if I can't get three, I know I can get one because I'm going to buy a membership for one. And (laughs) if we will get the NRA numbers up a lot, this is the time to do it. We we can't relax now. I've, I've had people say, oh, you know, we can relax now, you know. And this is not the time to relax. We have come so darn close to losing our Second Amendment, we this is a time to really get on it and stay on it. What, what's your Absolutely, opinion? Absolutely, Bill. I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. Look, I think it's a great concept. And look, thanks for the call. The um, Here's the thing. We talk about pushing back, pushing back, or resisting. This appears uh, to be our best opportunity to make advances for our rights. We have to not just resist the efforts of taking away our rights, we have to regain them, and we have to do it fast. We have to move fast. We need a, a blitzkrieg, if you will. We need, you know, to march down the field in football terms. We need to run up the score, if you will, because we have this opportunity. To not do that would be an abject failure. It would be foolhardy on our part. And to Bill's point, one of the ways we do that is to increase membership in the NRA increase membership in the Second Amendment Foundation, the NRA working very effectively on the legislative side. I think the Second Amendment Foundation is the lead dog when it comes to litigation and winning in the courts. Well, those two put together are an awesome combination. And oh yeah, by the way, Christmas is coming up. How about Christmas gifts of memberships to your friends? I think you can do a, a Second Amendment Foundation life membership for like 250 should you care to go that way. But just to put this in your head, now's the time for us to run up the score because you know they're going to come back at us. They're going to push back. Let's try to get everything we can toward that end. What would you like if you had your choice of what you could get? Also, we're coming up on Black Friday. A lot of things going on. We'll be talking about some of the deals and offers that are out there when we come back. 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. 